Hello, wonderful people. This is Mary Lorena, the teacher's best friend. So I'm back in giving you some information about the processing of visa, especially for uh, the teachers and other uh, positions who would like to apply for H-1B or J-1 visa. So what you need to know about these kinds of visa. So are you ready? Let's begin. So for uh, the comparisons, I know uh, there are so many um, people asking questions. How are we going to file for H-1B? What are the qualifications? and as well as the J-1 visa. So let's see and compare the two. So first, what is an H-1B visa? So this is uh, what we call commonly as the working visa. So working visa, there are um, eligibilities for this, and um, I am going to discuss it with you later, the requirements and the cost for H-1B visa. And at the same time, J-1 visa is uh, some is a visa that you give to different uh, positions who are interested to go to the United States. And for teachers, they call it the exchange visitor program. So there are 14 uh, positions who are eligible for this J-1 visa. First one is the au pair or, and educare, and these are the the person or the people who are working for an employer, like individual employer to provide um, services in their household. It can be a domestic service or uh, some uh, childcare or educare for their family. And camp counselor, camp counselor, if uh, there are uh, activities for kids, for youth, and um, you are an experienced person or you are sent by your home country to participate as camp counselor, then you are also qualified for J-1. So the government visitors, intern in um, different positions or like the scientists and all those international visitors, this is through the Department of State use only. Physicians, the doctors, professors and research scholars and including the short-term scholars that are only staying in the United States for research and to uh, work with other researchers and scholars in the United States. So specialists, and um, we know those different types of specialists. Um, it can be specialist in your respective area like engineer, uh, the scientist and, and others students and college university in college and university. So there are J-1 visa students. If you are going to enroll in the U.S. Uh, recognized university and uh, you get accepted, you have your admission and enrollment, then they will give you a student uh, J-1 visa. And also a student for secondary, like uh, usually these are the fourth year or the senior year in high school, the 12th grade, so they are also allowed to come to the U.S. for their secondary J-1 experience. Summer work travel, so if you are uh, working just for summer in a hotel, short term, and all those, uh, you are also allowed to do the J-1. And of course, the most awaited one for most of the viewers is the teacher J-1 visa and of course, uh, as trainee as well. So these are the 14 um, different positions that can be qualified for J-1 visa or the exchange visitor program. So J-1 visa sponsors. So to be able to get your J-1 visa, you should get a sponsor. And the sponsor is not the employer. It is an agency who will process your DS-2019. And there are several visa, J-1 visa sponsors, and you can find them in this website. Uh, check Bridge USA website or uh, the j1visa.state.gov slash sponsors. And for various positions that I've mentioned to you, those 14 positions, there are sponsors for J-1 visa. And also depending on what country or what state you are going to, 
there are eligible visa sponsors. And some of these that uh, are very familiar to me because um, our school used them in the past and you can research on this. There is the AAG or the Alliance Abroad Group and uh, Cultural Vistas, Global Education, Teachers Council, and also um, Cordell Hall Foundation and International, um, the IIE, International Institute of Education. So these are some of the visa sponsors, but there's a lot more. You can go and check Bridge USA website and see what uh, suits best for you, especially with what state are you planning to work. Okay, so you can go back and check the website if you did not get those. And the comparison, what is the difference between the J-1 visa and the H-1B visa? So, of course, J-1 is just a visitor's exchange visitor visa. So it's a temporary stay in the United States. And usually uh, they will give you initially three years. And then um, now there is a two-year extension. So if you are granted extension, you can stay in the U.S. on a J-1 visa up to five years. And then uh, for H-1B visa, since this is a working visa, usually they grant up to six years. But what is the difference between the five and the six years? So J-1 visa, you are obligated to go home to your home country and serve your residency. Since it is an exchange cultural visa, you are obligated to share what you learn from the US to your home country. If you're a teacher, if you're a scientist, you need to share those expertise and learning to your home country. And on the other hand, H-1B visa, though it's six years and sometimes it's extended more, more than six years, like seven. But the difference for this is if your employer like, they like you and uh, they are willing to employ you permanently and you don't need to go home, they can do that. It means from, a J, from an H-1B visa, they would like to sponsor you for a permanent resident, and that is the green card visa. So if your employer is capable of doing that, it means they pass the eligibility also for from the Department of Labor, then you can be a permanent resident right away if they petition you, if the employer will petition you, and there's no requirement for two years residency. So that is the positive thing about H-1B. But um, let us look at the steps. So in both visa, of course, there are eligibility. And later for J-1 visa, especially for teacher, I'll show you a chart. So check if you're eligible and then find a J-1 sponsor organization. That's what I've mentioned to you. Check the Bridge USA and find a sponsor and get your job offer with your company. In order to do that, of course, you need to find vacancies and apply, get an interview. And if the schools or company, they selected you, then you can contact the J-1 visa sponsor if they're willing to sponsor you because this company is willing to hire you. And in some cases, some schools and organization, they already have a selected sponsor, so they will be the one to recommend you. But for some, they do not have, so you are responsible to look for your J-1 sponsor organization, okay? So those are the steps. And um, of course, uh, as I have mentioned, you cannot get a sponsor if you did not apply. So you need to target the open position, get an interview, schedule to the company, and then apply for your uh, visa is the last one. Once you get selected, that's the time you get your J-1 uh, sponsor. Because the first requirement that they will ask for you in order to proceed with J-1 visa sponsorship is your job offer. Did you get the job offer? Did you get the contract? So if you have the job offer, then the sponsoring agency will contact your employer and they'll be the one to communicate. But in some cases, you know, 
uh, J-1 visa sponsors, they charge the applicant. So it means whatever fees you need to pay, they'll charge you. And uh, usually it's up to about the less I can remember at this point in time is about 1500 and they go as far as 3,500, depending on what sponsor did you select. But, you know, there are also sponsoring organizations that they prefer the school to pay. They will not allow the teachers or the applicant to pay and they will charge the school. And you are lucky if you find that sponsor. And one of these, if you may um, check also, is the Cardell Hall Foundation. This is a very reputable sponsoring agency. They do not charge the teacher. They charge the organization. But they are very strict in selection as well. Okay. So that is for the J-1 visa. There are step one to six that you need to do in order to get that visa. While for H-1B, of course, you should... Uh, be eligible as well, or they call it specialty of occupation. So usually these are the, the teachers with at least two years of experience. They are working in their uh, respective country. They are certified. And for some positions, it's the same thing. You, if you are an engineer, you should be a licensed engineer. If you are a a business person, you should have at least several experiences in that uh, job. And of course, uh, you are at least a bachelor degree in order to be eligible for specialty occupation. And then step two, make sure the salary offered to you by the company is meeting the prevailing wage there is a prevailing wage of the Department of Labor. And then file and receive the labor certification and then prepare for USCIS form I-129. Those are the documents that usually the, the attorney or the immigration office is helping you to do. Usually if you apply for like a teaching position, the teacher's position, then they will send these documents to your employer and then they will the employer will sign those documents. And um, you will collect required supporting documents as well, like your credential evaluation, your passport, and so on and so forth. And uh, file for H-1B petition with the USCIS. And then once um, they receive it, you will get as I-797C, that's like receipt notice that they receive your application and the fees that you um, gave or the company or the immigration agency that is working on your paper. And then later on, you'll get the I-797A, which is the approval notice, okay? So those are the steps. And um, which is costly? Is it uh, the H-1B or the J-1? So we will find out. So first, what are the documents needed for J-1? So these are the documents needed. You need the DS-2019 form. That is the Certificate of Eligibility for Exchange a Visitor Program. Uh, and there is the DS-700 form, DS-160 DS-160 is the application to the U.S. Embassy in your country. Like if you are in the Philippines, you go to U.S. Embassy in Manila. If you are in Africa, U.S. Embassy in maybe Nairobi or Kenya or other countries. Of course, you need the valid passport, photos, and you need the travel insurance. And they have a requirement for travel insurance if you are a J-1 just to ensure since you are an exchange visitor, you should have your insurance. So, and um, look at the chart. There are, I mentioned to you, if you are a secondary school student, like in the 11th or 12th grade, you are eligible. But let me focus on the teacher position because I know there are several teachers watching right now or prospective uh, applicants abroad to get their J-1 visa. So what is the purpose of your visit if you are on a J-1 visa? Of course, to teach full-time in an accredited 
primary, including pre-kindergarten, it's, it's the pre-K-12 school. It can be a public school, private school, BIE school, or a charter school. So that is the purpose of your visit as an exchange teacher. And uh, you need to be a teacher in your home country because you're applying for a J-1 teacher. So it means you are a current teacher, you're currently working, you have at least two years of experience, you have a bachelor's degree, and you are certified in your home country to be able to get that eligibility. So it says their minimum of two years of experience and BA equivalent. And the duration of visit, as I've mentioned, is three years, and then you can extend to another two years as well if they like your service, okay? So that's the chart. <coughs> How about for the H-1B? So you can see the flow chart. This is from a government accountability office agency. <coughs> Excuse me. So first, of course, in order to get an H-1B visa, which is a working visa, the first requirement is you should have an employer. Without an employer who is interested to hire you, you cannot apply for a, a working visa or an H-1B visa. So step one is um, the Department of Labor. They need to file the labor condition application. That means is the position under specialty and uh, is, the, is, is the company that is willing to hire you is following the prevailing wage in that particular location and all those information, okay? So after that, uh, you, you uh, file or the agency file the I-129 and then the Department of Homeland Security determines whether the information on the labor certification application and I-129 is consistent. And if the employer meets the eligibility criteria, and if the position is specialty position or occupation, and that's the time they can determine that the employer is qualified to petition someone for the H-1B or the working visa, okay? And of course, um, step three, the Department of State, uh, which is uh, they will issue the consular office review or they will review the H-1B package, compares the documentary evidence against information learned uh, from applicant interviews and issue visa if no problems are found. So they will they will release that visa. And upon approved I-129, there is a supporting um, documents that you will receive. And um, it will, it will, uh, you will receive a notification or the agency who is filing for your uh, H-1B visa will receive the 797 approval notice if you are eligible, okay? So, and um, in order to file for the H-1B, there are two things to consider. First, you should go to what they call a, a quota. It means you will go to a like a raffle or they draw your name. This will happen if your employer does not have a, is not accredited to like a college institution or university. But if your employer is accredited to a college or university, they are exempted for the quota. It means they are always on the front line. So if they file a visa for you, you do not need to wait for the draw or there's no waiting time. You are on the front line right away. So that is one thing you need to ask to your employer if they have uh, exemption because they are accredited to college and university, okay? So what are the costs in obtaining J-1 visa? Okay, so I did not put 
cost here because it varies depending on the sponsoring agency I have mentioned uh, at the beginning that it may range from the DS 2019 filing may range from uh, $1,500 or $1,500 to even $3,500. It depends on how much they charge depending on the company. Or, or it can also be free, free from uh, like for the applicants, but the, the employers are the one paying because some sponsor they are requiring employers to pay and not the applicant. Okay, so that is the first cost is your DS twenty nineteen. So you prepare for at least uh, up to three thousand five hundred for that. And what are the additional costs? Um, the DS one sixty, which is you need to schedule your interview to the embassy. It's about I think one hundred sixty dollars, and um, and I I already says that who pays the J one visa fee? It can be the applicant or the employer. So those are the only costs that you can uh, have, plus your insurance. Maybe you can get um a short term insurance because that's a requirement, and uh your airplane ticket. So those are the costs. But you know, some people that goes and use third party agency, they have more cost because, you know, um, being an agency, that's their business. So they charge more for the services they give to you. But if you are a direct hire, you apply directly to school district, like um, example, Texas or Arizona, or Maryland and other states, and they like you, you applied directly, then you just need to get a sponsor. And these, those are the fees that you need. Maybe the most that you can spend, including your airfare is about $5,000. But if you use an agency, it will go up to $10,000 to $12,000. So that's a big difference. So it depends on what, what route you would like to take, okay? I'm just giving you the options. How about for H-1B visa? So these are the common fees that uh, you need to prepare. So you will file the I-129 petition um, under the labor certification application. So that is uh, about $460. And then there is... Um, another fee for education and training fee, 1500 for an employers uh, with fewer than um, 25 full-time, it's about 750. So if they have 25 or more, that is 1500. So it depends on how big the company is, but most school district, they have more than 25 employees full-time employees, so they pay $1,500, okay? And usually the $460 and the $1,500, it must be paid by the organization or by the school district. So they shoulder that because those are some mandatory fees that they need to pay if they are petitioning a teacher or any worker for an H-1B visa. And if, if you... They also need to uh, pay the 500 H-1B USCIS anti-fraud fee. That's just a government fee, okay? 500, extra $500. So 460 plus 1500 plus 500, that is about uh, $2,000. And usually the one paying uh, this at 2,460 is the employer because that is required by the government, the 2,460. Um, uh, 2, but if you would like to expedite the process, there, in a, as, there is an option. They call it the, the speed up the petition or the expedite process. You need to pay extra 2,500. Okay, so those are common visa fee for the H-1. What are the other fees? So if you use an agency or a lawyer or an immigration attorney, 
there are extra fees that you will shoulder. And this is the agency fee, about $15,000 or $1,500 or more. The legal service, about $600 or more. And if you are have dependents that you would like to bring under H-4 visa, you will pay another $370. And the DS-160, which is $160, that's your embassy interview. So except for the 2,460, the one on the green, the employer uh, will pay for them. But the expedite process, usually it's the applicant and the other fees. So you can estimate now how much money you need in order to apply for an H-1B visa to work in the United States. Okay, so... Uh, that is the computation approximately. And of course, plus your airplane ticket, depending on where you're flying. So those are the information on the J-1 visa. And um, I thank you for watching and listening. And please, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. I know it's been a while, but uh, you will get an, uh, more information, receive more information about everything about teaching, everything about applying abroad as a teacher. And um, in my previous videos, I uh, kind of gave some uh, videos on IEP processes. I think I have part one and part two. You can look for that. I have classroom management, the Danielson model. Uh, which is uh, most districts are using for their evaluation and um, instruction. So I have those available in my past video. So feel free to subscribe to my channel so you will uh, be notified with my new videos and see the old ones as well. So I hope you learned a lot from this blog regarding the difference between the H-1B and the J-1 visa. So until next time, to all my teacher's best friend, thank you for watching and for supporting. And don't forget to write your comments and questions on the comment box. And I usually read them and respond back to you. So thank you very much and see you next time. Bye. God bless you all.